Soulmate questions, please. How do you know if you've met a real soulmate? Okay, good question. And most people don't, is the answer. Mm. The reason why they don't is, what do you reckon it might be? Emotional injuries. The emotional injuries. Yeah. Mm. So let's say, my, let's say I'm, I'm, you know, walking along the street, male, and my soulmate's walking in the other direction, and I've got an emotional injury that I need a woman to be four inches shorter than me before I find her attractive. A lot of men have got that injury where they need the woman to be look smaller than themselves. And let's say the woman's walking along thinking she needs the man to be four inches taller than her <laughs> to be attractive, right? Now, if she happens to be 5'7 and I happen to be 5'8, or what's that in centimetres, I don't know, yeah. 170 let's say, and 175, 4, and what's going to happen? Nothing. I'll look at her, maybe, feel some kind of connection, but go, no, 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 she's too short, or she's too tall, or he's too short, right? And walk on by. Just one little emotional injury <laughs> caused me just to walk past my soulmate. Do you need that soulmate again? Again, not the fish going around. The uh, you may do. You may do. <laughs> you may do. You certainly you will over you your life. Else, yeah. So if you include your life as being the spirit world life as well, you will certainly come up with the. So soul. you get a second chance. Yeah, many soulmates. I've I've seen soulmates introduced to each other even in the spirit world, and they've taken one look at each other and just gone in the opposite direction. They've just said, "No, that's not my soulmate." Not that kind. And then, like a hundred years later, realised that oh, that he one. was actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is a soul connection? I suppose you could ask. Mm. A lot of people think, oh, I've got this wonderful sexual connection going on with this person. I just feel blown away sexually by this person. And that is not necessarily a soulmate mm. connection. The reason why is that I could have this really uh, sexual connection is about first and second chakras, right, mm -hmm. in the body. Now I could have I could have a really severe emotional injury in myself as a male where I feel like drawn to women who want to have power over me, mm -hmm. right? Who am I going to be sexually attracted to? A woman who wants to have power over me. Mm -hmm. So I'll feel a strong sexual connection with her. Doesn't mean she's my soulmate. All it means is that our emotional injuries that cause the awakening of my sexual impulse are compatible. And the more compatible, the stronger the sexual desire. But it doesn't mean the person's my soulmate. And I might find that when I heal that injury within myself, that same person I find totally untractable. Mm -hmm. right? So, can you see how important it is to heal my own opposite sex emotional injuries? Very, very important. So how do I recognise my soulmate then? Like, well it's very, very hard if I've got lots of emotional injuries towards the opposite sex. Very hard. And that's why I say, like, be honest about these emotional injuries you feel towards the opposite sex. Really get into them and allow yourself to experience them and work your way through them because if you don't, you firstly will never be complete for yourself. So it's an obligation really, you have to be on the half of yourself. Isn't it? Really, it is. Yeah. Yeah, and and it's perfect. When you think about it, the way God created it is pretty clever, right? Eh? Yeah. Do to you, be whole and complete. To be whole and complete with yeah. your own self, yeah. which right. means the two of these being you need together, the other half. you're going to need the other half, which means that you're going to need to be dedicated to dealing with yeah. all of your injuries with the yeah. other half. Yeah. And so do they. And so do they. Yeah. yeah. But the, the interesting thing about the soulmate attraction is if one of you make the choice. To deal with all of your emotional injuries mm. about the other half, the other half will automatically be drawn into your life. Even if you're born in another country. Even if you're born in another country. And left when you were very young. Sorry. And you left when you were very young. So. Yep. Yep. That soulmate could come after you or before you. That yep, and they'll be drawn. If you deal with your stuff, they'll be drawn some for some reason to a certain place. Like, my in this in this. I what do you want, my first century life or this one? And I can give you an illustration of both okay, you know, with regard okay. to soulmate. And let's look at the first century life. And as I was growing up, I started and I cleared out all of these emotional injuries with the opposite sex, right? What happened was that I, f I, I felt 
like no sexual attraction to anyone. So I got to the point where I didn't feel sexually attracted, and this was in my teenage years, didn't feel sexually attracted to anyone I met. And, uh, and that just continued for the next quite a few years. It was nearly 15 years like that where I wasn't sexually attracted to everyone. So I was attracted to everyone in terms of loving everyone, but not sexually attracted. What happened was that as I got myself into an one condition with God, and I went in through that process, then I began my, what, I, what I've now called my public ministry, where I started talking to people about what the truth was that I'd gone through myself. Now, as in, during that phase, I attracted the woman in, from a town, my soulmate was in a town that I probably would never have visited before then for any reason other than me wanting to teach the truth. Mm. Right? And because I visited that town, I met her. And as soon as I met her, I knew she was my soulmate. Now she didn't know. She didn't know she was my soulmate at the time, but I knew. And I didn't tell her because I wanted her to come to the realisation herself. Right, as to what was going on. But she felt very attracted to me, not because of me being a man she would normally be attracted to, but because she was more attracted to men who would, um, who would make her feel secure and make her feel financially secure and so forth. That's what she was more attracted to. And of course I didn't have much funds and, and I was going around and saying I was a messiah, which meant I probably had a short lifespan and things like that, right? <laughs> So, you know, initially she, she would not have normally been attracted to a man like that. But she felt drawn to the message and to the message of truth and that caused her to deal with some of her emotions and then she realised that I was probably her soulmate. Uh, she had some, a lot of issues to work through about that just like you know, many of us do when we, when we meet our soulmate. Now, when you meet your soulmate, what starts happening then is every single emotional injury left within yourself is going to be triggered even more when you meet your soulmate than it would be with any other person. The reason why your soulmate connection is connecting you on all the chakra levels, all the energy, but not just the chakras like the seven, but all of the energy points that are going on in your whole body are, are about the actual energy connection with your soulmate, the emotional connection with your soulmate. So you imagine when you meet them, all of a sudden, all of these things start going on that you, you know, that that start really surprising you and confronting you, and it's going to be very confronting for most of you emotionally when you meet your soulmate if you haven't already, right, from a from an emotional perspective. So it's not like oh, meet your soulmate, all your dreams come true, off walk off in the, not like that because you've got all of your emotional errors that are being confronted consistently. So let's go forward to this century. For me, I became, I've been, I've had this feeling or longing for my soulmate all my life. I can remember walking around when I was four years old holding a girl's hand <laughs> thinking about my soulmate, right? So that's been something that's been all my life. Now, I, because of my emotional injuries, I attracted three relationships in my life and, and every single one of those relationships I felt at some point they were my soulmate. And then as I worked through some emotional injuries, I realised no, they're not. Right. Then I got myself into a state, and this was uh, nearly six years ago now, where I said to myself, I, I don't want to have another relationship unless it's my soulmate. Right. And so what I decided to do then was focus on dealing with all of my unhealed emotional injuries with the opposite sex through the law of attraction. So whatever women would be attracted into my life uh, doesn't age immaterial. From a child to an older lady, I would actually allow myself to feel what they're triggering within me and work my way through those issues emotionally. Uh, beginning with my mother, uh, where a lot of the issues reside. And so I allow myself to do that over the next five years. So I remain single and celibate for that time. Uh, just dealing with all of those emotions. Still, and all that time, my longing for my soulmate was growing, of course, because I, as I released a new emotion, that meant I would have more capacity to actually long for and love my soulmate, and so my longing grew. 
And then I, and I had this feeling for all that time that I needed to move to Queensland. So I lived in South Australia and I felt I needed to go to Queensland. So, so I moved to Queensland. And unbeknown to me, in the time between looking at Queensland and moving to Queensland, because of my desire to begin teaching the truth again, so it happened in a similar way to, for me than it happened in the first century, because of that desire building, I actually met my soulmate's parents in one of these kind of groups that we had up there. And I didn't know at the time, and she was overseas, my soulmate was overseas in Lebanon, of all places. And Lebanon wasn't a place that I was thinking of visiting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she wasn't thinking of coming home either. She was in a relationship with somebody else. And, uh, and then I had some really strong emotions come up about maybe losing my soulmate even, and right at that moment, unbeknown to me, she was considering marrying this man that she was with in Lebanon. And then within a week, that relationship had broken. And uh, within a month, she came home to Australia. So my longing for my soulmate caused all of these different events, mm -hmm. right, to occur automatically without my knowing. And I only found out about them afterwards. And then uh, her parents, because they, they were going to these groups, they wanted me to meet her. So, so it wasn't. They didn't try to. They weren't trying to set me up with her. In fact, they felt quite the opposite. They, they wanted to, uh, and they still feel quite the opposite actually. Um, they wanted to, you know, just just have us meet because what what had been happening for them is that they'd been receiving all this truth that you're receiving now, and being really quite fascinated, and they wanted. They're both of their children, their son and their daughter, to, to meet me, and they both met me on the same day. Now, again, the instant I saw her, <laughs> I realised who she was, because I was at that stage had dealt with lots of different emotions. And it wasn't looking at a picture, it wasn't anything to do with her face or how pretty she is or any of those kind of things. It was all just to do with some, some feelings that I could feel just look, looking in her eyes, actually. And it just, I, I just came to realise that this, the, the feelings that I could get from this soul, if you like, were totally different to all of the other feelings that I felt from any other person. And some of them were sexual, which was the first time that had happened for the previous five years. And that had never happened before. And so I knew straight away she was my soulmate, but she didn't realise because of her what she was going through, a breakup, a relationship, and lots of anger issues with uh, men, or not so much anger issues, but frustration issues with men and so forth she was working through. And uh, it was only much later again than that that she started to understand what was going on herself. Did you tell her you'd broken up the relationship? <laughs> no. Well, it wasn't me that broke it up. Obviously, it was her desire too. Yes, I One thing that she had said a month before she met me, after she had broken up with her previous partner, she longed for a, a man in her life who was spiritually inclined. And she wanted a complete relationship with him, sexually, emotionally, physically, and all those kind of things. Like, and a month later, I rocked up. Mm -hmm. uh, from her exercising that, so it was a combination of desires. Yeah. Yeah. Now that all being said, when we get together, when we met, um, her first emotion towards me was one of deep anger. And the reason why was because one of the core emotions within her was that in the first century when I died, she felt that I chose to die, which I did, and, uh, and she felt really, really angry and upset with me about leaving her. And so she couldn't understand, but she just had this deep rage towards me <laughs> when she met me. Now, if I was in a state where I was, you know, really upset with women's anger and everything like that, I would have, of course, just said, well, what got on there, right? Mm. And I would have just walked away from that. But because I still owning my own emotions, I had to own all of my own emotions. So for the first few times we met, I'd go home and I had a big cry, actually, <laughs> about you know, how my soulmate felt about me. I knew she was my soulmate, but I also could feel how she was feeling. So, does it make sense to you that, that, you know, in fact, when I met her, she brought up so many emotions within myself still that I had not connected with 
that I spent the next month and a half going through some pretty severe emotions. Then we actually, she caught up with me while I was overseas and we had a short period of time together, but then lots of emotions came up for her and for me. And so we separated for a time, nearly three months. And uh, it's only recently again that we've got back together, and I don't know how long for. But I feel this time that it'll be a more permanent thing because we now both have the desire, those three things that we were, I was talking about before. Yeah. We're now both in a humble place. We're now both looking for God's truth and we're now both looking for God's love.